Good day, folks. We're at uh, Rawai Gym and Fitness. Just getting a start in to the morning. This is one of the best budget gyms in the area. As you can see, we're sweating, we're hot. It's hot in here, but it's fun. Tita's a very good motivational trainer for me. She comes along and pushes me, and we push each other, actually. So this is a start to our morning. We're just showing you something a little different that we do early in the mornings, and um, there's lots of um, equipment in here you can do. Uh, free weights, uh, treadmill, cardio stuff, boxing, spaces for skipping, and yeah, it's a good gym. Mm. And the price is really good. I'm going to show you the price on the screen so you can uh, consider it for yourself if you are out here. So yeah, good start. You feeling good? So we're here at a little corner shop right next to our house. This is where we do the laundry and you can get some fruits here and friendly people help us out with a lot of things. This guy's uh, repairing a motorbike. These ladies are trying to catch a snake. Oh. Around here. Oh. All right, that was exciting. I don't think it was poisonous, just a little tree snake, but... But as you know, if it's snake, everyone's gonna like... <laughs> Nobody wants to change it. To to <laughs> We're back home in the kitchen. <laughs> We're about to do some juicing. What do we got, bud? First, Thai celery. Ginger, lime, Thai lime, and last one, pineapple. Okay, go. Let's go. Boom. Mm Which one is? This one is a lot more. Okay, we're going for Esquire. Good boy! Good? Good juice. Easy to drink because we put a lot of pineapple inside. Yep. Okay, this is a good start of the day. It have a bit of bitter from celery, right? Tita has been making some tempeh. Show me a tempeh, babe. Is it ready? Fresh out of the... Yeah, yeah, it's ready some freshly made tempeh. If you're in Phuket and you want some tempeh, maybe Tita could uh, hook you up. Maybe you start a business, babe? Tempeh, Tita's tempeh business. She yeah, makes it good. And they're certified organic soybeans grown in Chiang Mai. We get them shipped down here. Ooh, they're still hot. Yeah. Super healthy, full of uh, B vitamins, B12, and very delicious. 
They're just going to roast them in the oven. <laughs> so right now I'm going to go and wrap jackfruit with some plastic bag because it have a lot of jackfruit here and it have a lot of bug that try to eat them so I just prevent the bug from from eating the jackfruit some soup from that and then I'm gonna pick up some fresh papaya to make papaya salad <laughs> Fresh malako. Oh, what are you gonna make with that? Some tam papaya salad. I don't know. Okay. Anywhere Tida goes, she gonna take the mortar with her. <laughs> Let's go. All right, we're stepping out for a bit of adventure. This guy out here has got the motorbike loaded with the local sato beans. It's right in season at the moment, we're seeing it everywhere. He's, uh, he's got a lot on, on the back of the bike there. All right. We've just arrived somewhere very unique and remote. Just come to the new area. Mm. Katu area. Katu. And the coffee shop, looking good. Okay, here we are. This place is called Kiang Kao, Forest and Calf. We've got a beautiful little spot here by the flowing water. Nice view, surrounded by jungle and forest and trees. Very natural environment. Mm -hmm. Americano iced. Mm -hmm. Oh, we've got, we've got a little snack. Delicious. Mm. I think they mix tamarind with it yeah. and some peanut. So as we're sitting here enjoying a little afternoon coffee and stuff, I thought I'd have a little chat with you guys because I've been getting a lot of people reaching out to me asking about my story, how I moved to Thailand and how long I've been here for. Um, so I can share a little bit about that. 2014 it was when I came here and I think it was approximately six months of planning when I was inspired by another Australian friend of mine. She was a girl that I'd known for a while, a good friend of mine, and she had moved to Chiang Mai and was enjoying life there. And she said, hey, Esquire, I think you'd really like it here. So I started planning and I didn't have much money to be honest. I only I had a I had a few K in the I think I had about by the time I left Australia and went to Thailand I had about twenty thousand Australian dollars in the bank that I'd saved up. I'd sold my car, my furniture in my house, maybe a guitar, a few guitars. I sold, I kept my good ones, they're still in storage in, in Australia. Sold a lot of things and left it all behind, hopped on a plane, went to Chiang Mai. First time I'd ever been in Chiang Mai. As soon as I arrived, I loved the place so much. I responded to some classified ads, people looking for web designers, and I came across a Thai company. It was a golf travel company. This was the first week I was in Thailand. The, uh, the company wanted a website built and I'm completely self-taught, YouTube taught on how to build websites and I locked myself away and I worked on this website and got it done and got it done really well. I got very minimal education, high school dropout, no university degree and I know what a lot of people are thinking, you can't get a job in Thailand without a university degree. Well. Let me tell you, that's not true because the company offered me a visa, working visa, a salary, 
everything legit so there I was I was secured my life in Thailand but I think it all, all also comes down to my self-belief and particularly at this time I was willing to do anything not to spend all my savings and put myself in a position where I would have to go back to Australia. Australia is a beautiful country but I was over it and there was some things that I was just ready to leave behind and um, I believed in myself and I was willing to do anything. My first apartment in Chiang Mai was very very low budget. It was just a bed and a bathroom. How much is it? 2,500 oh baht. My, my very first apartment in Satitam, Chiang Mai. So very, cheap. very low budget <laughs> place. And I lived there for one year, yeah. Wow. Before I met Tita, yeah. And I had some great times there. And um, you know what, I think about it and I think about what's happening in the world today. I know a lot of things have changed in terms of ease of travel and everything but I still believe that if I was in a position where I wanted to leave Australia right now or and, and go to another place I'd still be able to do it I would find a way and there, there's always a way I, I had to overcome a lot of obstacles to get here back then and and a lot of people really doubted me. A lot of people said, oh, you can't do that, you know, it's, you'll be back. The years went on and I started to get a lot of messages from, from friends saying, hey, when are you coming back? And it's like, man, this is my home now, so. So what do you think that holding someone back What's holding from you? moving to another country? Yeah, it, like, to answer your question, I, I would say it's all about belief. It's all about mm -hmm. self-belief and, and determination. Just don't let anything stop you. There's always a way. It might take a lot of research and hard work. So you, at least you need to make some plan. You need, you need to make some plan, but you also got to be prepared to get out of your comfort zone. Like, you may think, oh, but I don't want to sell my car or, you know, my big screen TV. Well, you just got to let it go. You've you got to be sell willing it. to suffer. Yeah, all. yeah. You know, I had to let go of a lot of things and and it was a good move. Look who came into my life. <laughs> Travel maker. <Yeah. laughs> what do you say? It's about mindset? It's about belief? It's about belief, yeah. Create that field that allows everything to happen. Don't... This is where the word unlimited comes in, in this channel name, Esquire Unlimited, because I believe in this world of unlimited possibilities with the right mindset. I don't always have it, but when I do, it's a good place to be, and that's, that's where I want to be. So, yeah, and here we are, in this stunning location, Phuket. We've had a really nice time here. Good, good place, yeah. Yeah, re fully recommend this. All right, we're gonna make our way to the beach. Yay! We have just arrived at Surin Beach. We got prime position right on the front of the beach. Tita's getting out some toys. Let's get our little floor mat. Esky. Oh, mate, look at this. Perfect. Here we're all set up. Camp. Go for a swim. Da. Let's go. Go together. Wow, Yeah, Surin Beach.
Fridge mango steam. Wow, that's look wonderful. I love it. Mm. Sunset cooking on the beach. Teddy's got that homemade tempeh on the go. Check it out. Just take a moment to appreciate this sunset. What about cooking? Ah? Don't worry about cooking for now. So we mark the. Beautiful atmosphere here, guys. There's people out chilling, watching the sunset. Happy couples. Some families sharing a beer together. Very nice, isn't it, babe? Good vibes. She's preparing the ingredients. What do we got here, babe? It's drizzling on the curry sauce over the tempeh. Look at that. Juicy. Thai red curry tempeh. Amazing. This is papaya that we pick fresh from the tree. We is have something on. We need to wash them first. Whoa, it's still so fresh. You can see. All right, we're gonna enjoy some of this delicious food Tita has cooked up and watch the sun disappear over the horizon and just relax here on the beach. It's been an awesome day. I'm feeling, I'm feeling good every time when we come to the beach. I love it. I love cooking by the beach and seeing sunset. It's really good. Feeling.